in this screencast lecture we are going to see in detail about the organic matter decomposition first we try to understand what is organic matter also referred as organic material or natural organic matter refers to large pool or source of carbon based compounds that could be present within natural environment or engineered terrestrial and aquatic environment here engineered refers to man made environment such as a buildings what is the source from which you are getting the organic matter it's mainly from the plant apart from that animal can also contribute that to the organic matter of the soil organic matter in an cultivated soil can range from trace to 30 percentage as i already told soil organic matter mainly originate there from the plant tissue it contains 60 to 90 percentage of moisture and the dry matter consists of various nutrients including carbon oxygen hydrogen and small amount of sulfur nitrogen phosphorus and other elements such as calcium potassium and magnesium these constituents play a major role there in the soil fertility management in the soil organic matter 10 to 40 percentage would be comprising of the naturally occurring microorganism they also serve as an active organic fraction of the soil organic matter apart from that 40 to 60 percentage of the organic matter may be consists of highly resistant for degradation compounds like humus for a practical purpose the organic matter can be divided into those that have been present above as well as below ground fractions above ground organic matter consists of plant residues and animal residues whereas below ground organic matter include soil fauna microflora that is microorganism that are playing an important role there in the organic matter decomposition apart from that the below ground organic matter also constitutes the plant and animal residues as well as the toughest to degrade substances such as humic acids or humic substances organic matter plays an important role there in the agricultural standpoint this is mainly due to two reasons it serves as a revolving nutrient fund from which nutrient that is required for the soil can be obtained and that will be further moving there into the plant system and organic matter is the one which acts as a agent to improve the soil structure texture as well as it minimizes the soil erosion now we look at what is the meaning for decomposition of organic matter it is a process in which mostly physical breakdown and biochemical transformation of complex organic molecules into a simple organic and inorganic substances or molecules could be resulted mainly by the action of microorganism present in the soil so microbes play an important role there in the organic matter decomposition next we try to look at what are all dominantly present there in the soil organic matter that is of a plant origin so here the main constituent of plant origin based soil organic matter is cellulose which constitutes 4 to 50 percentage apart from that it found to contain hemi cellulose of 15 to 20 percentage and a toughest molecule to get degraded that is lignin that constitutes 8 to 20 percentage apart from that waxes and pigment could be present amino acids amino sugars as well as nucleotides are all minor soluble component that could be present there in the soil organic matter starch is again another another important component that may be dominating there in the soil organic matter so the soil organic matter will be having the following constituents that is a plant litter that have been reaching into the soil will have the following constituents that have been bonded together it will have a cellulose hemicellulose lignin molecule pectin molecule as well as various kinds of hemicellulose component that is extensin and arabinocytes that are all tightly bounded to the structure first we try to see how the soluble components are degraded the soluble components here constitutes amino acids organic acids and sugar that would be readily available there in the system for decomposition so they are commonly degraded by the zymogenous group of bacteria that is a group of bacteria which gets dominated under a particular condition 
and they can effectively utilize this carbon substrate. Apart from that, certain fungi such as a mucor and rhizopus may also involved in the degradation. And the next one is a soluble portion of proteins. It is a significant component of the plant residue and it forms into a sizable portion there in the green videos. Here, proteins are made up of amino acids that are linked together by peptide bonds. They can be readily decomposed in the soil with the help of some special enzymes such as a proteases and peptidases. Those degraded products, say for example, ammonia or ammonium that have been formed due to degradation of proteins can be effectively transported inside the cell and it will be metabolized by the microorganism. Next, we look at in detail about the molecules that are tough to be degraded there in the soil system. That includes cellulose, lignin, pectin, hemicellulose, starch. We will see the molecules one by one. The first one is cellulose. In plant, it acts as a structural polysaccharide and it gives a rigidity for the cells. They may also present in the algae and the glucose is the monomer which makes the cellulose. It mainly get linked in a beta 1,4 linkage type. Apart from that, cross linking could be established there by formation of hydrogen bonds which gives a paracrystalline assemblages which are technically referred as microfibrils. Cellulose content may be as low as 15% there in the young plants or it can account for more than 50% in the case of the woody plants. It is actually a large polymer, insoluble in nature and it is too large to enter inside the microbial cells. So, it need to be degraded extracellularly and the degraded products such as a glucose alone can be taken inside. The enzymes that are collectively involved in the cellulose degradation are referred as cellulases. It includes beta 1,4 endogluconase, beta 1,4 exogluconase and a beta 1,4 glucosidase enzyme. The steps that are involved in the cellulose degradation includes the first one loss of crystalline like structure followed by depolymerization and then comes the role of the endogluconase enzyme which randomly attack on both soluble as well as insoluble glucose chains by cleaving on the beta 1,4 linkages that will be yielding glucose as well as cellulose oligosaccharides. The next enzyme to follow is the exogluconase that will be including gluconohydrolase like enzyme which acts on the non-reducing ends of the cellulose chains yielding glucose as well as cellulose biose molecules and cellotriose molecule. The resulting two or three glucose containing cellobios and triose are effectively finally degraded by beta 1,4 glucosidase enzyme. This results in the formation of the monomer glucose. That glucose can be easily taken up by the cells and metabolized there in the microbial cells. Organisms that are involved in this degradation are classified first into fungal groups that includes trichoderma, aspergillus, pencilium, fusarium as well as some groups of brown rot fungi. We will see in detail about that fungi when we are looking at the explanation for the lignin degradation. Bacteria involved in the cellulose degradation are streptomyces, pseudomonas, bacillus, cellomonas and cytophaga. Next one, a term called cellulosome is commonly used there in the literature. It actually refers to an extracellular enzyme complex that have been present there in a anaerobic cellulose degrading bacteria such as a clostridium. It consists of various kinds of cellulosomal enzymes that are capable of degrading the cellulose or plant cell walls. Plant cell wall is the one which can found to contain more amount of cellulose. Here it is an image showing how a bacteria mainly cytophaga has been involved in the degradation of the cellulose microfibrils. The next important polymer that have been present there in the organic matter is hemicellulose. It is the second most abundant plant polymer. It is also called as a heteropolymer or cross-linking glycons. It can be simply made up of hexoses of galactose or it can made up of pentoses like arabinose. And sometimes certain sugar derived acids such as uranic acids called as a glucuronic acid may be dominating there in the hemicellulose. This hemicellulose may be of a homopolymer or heteropolymer. An example for a homopolymer of hemicellulose is xylon, which is made up of a single kind of sugar called as a xylose. 
An example for a heteropolymeric hemicellulosis glucomannose found to constitute glucose as well as mannose sugar to make up that particular polymer. This polymer is a branched one but made up of short chains of 500 to 3000 sugar units. Whereas cellulose is the one which is made up of long chains that are built with the glucose molecules. Like cellulose, it also found to have a beta-1,4 glycosidic linkage as a backbone. In addition, they found to contain short side chains that are linked by alpha-1,2, alpha-1,3 and alpha-1,6 linkages. Some examples of the hemicellulose molecules are xylon, glucomannan, xyloglucan and arabinoxylan. For example, the hardwoods are commonly made up of a hemicellulose of acetyl methyl glucuronoxylan. Whereas softwood found to contain hemicellulose that are made up of a substrate like arabinomethyl glucuronoxylan. Next, we look at some of the enzymes that may be degrading this hemicellulose. Say, for example, alpha glucuronidase as well as acetyl xylan esterase are involved there in the degradation of the hemicellulose present there in the hardwoods as well as softwoods. Other hemicellulose degrading enzymes are endo 14 beta xylanase and alpha L arabino furanosidase. These two enzymes will be involved there in the hemicellulose which is made up of arabinofuranose. Whereas when the hemicellulose molecule is made up of xylose polymer, it could be effectively degraded by beta D xylosidase enzyme. The organism which is dominantly involved there in the degradation of hemicellulose is phenybacillus species.